Hey YouTube, it's J.P. Dillon. Today I want to go over basic servicing aspects of the self-contained Magnavox console chassis that you find in a lot of the Astrosonic models. Now commonly the scenario will be they do need a recap, they need lots of capacitors, all those terrible Nishikon and other things like that are all dried up and bad. But what happens after you've gotten all the caps replaced and it still doesn't quite work to your liking? So that's going to be the purpose of this video. And if you're wondering what these chassis look like, this is kind of what they look like. They're all self-contained. You've got your amplifier in the middle, the multiplex on the right, the tuner on the left. Uh, as far as what they have underneath, it's pretty straightforward. Simple amplifier with driver transformers. There's a preamp card on the right. All the electrolytics go bad there. So again, we're going to focus on what is needed after repairs. And so I just got this hooked up to my scope. Uh, I don't remember exactly what the selector is on. Uh, we're going to turn this on after I plug it in. That's helpful. Can't power it with my thoughts yet. Let's turn it on. This is your timber control. Just set this at midpoint. This is your volume. Um, all right, so one of these selections at the far end, I believe, is the turntable. Power will go off when it's the turntable. There we go. And fully counter or fully clockwise should be the auxiliary. And not seen anything yet. Let's see here. Feed it some signal. Okay. So there we are looking over at our oscilloscope. We see there are left and right channel slightly imbalanced best way to set the balance is turn the volume all the way up, turn the signal down and then there's a potentiometer at the back of the set near the uh, transformer right here and what you do is you adjust that and just take the camera off the stand here you adjust that so that the channels are equal that's about right with a scope you can overlap them and see that they do overlap each other so that's good that sets your basic balance level assuming your preamp and everything is working okay alright so the next thing we do I'm going to assume you've cleaned all the pots and switches already if you haven't done that now's a good time uh, let's go back to the radio Alright, so if I turn the volume down here and click over to the radio, we're going to go to FM. I just have a basic antenna hooked up and we're going to go over to 98.5 and see if my generator is on par. The tuning meter deflects. Alright, so we appear to be. This is not FM stereo. Let me see if FM stereo works. Click over one. Well, either way, up oh, there's FM stereo. It's one click over. The light doesn't light up, but the uh, scope changes because I can see on my generator that I have set. All right. <clears throat> so first, I'm going to start out with FM mono which I believe is the last click over by uh, no, it's the middle click between stereo and FM AFC alright so what we're going to do is a very basic detector alignment if you do not have a signal generator to do this alignment don't do it give it to somebody who can okay so the first thing you have to do is the basic detector alignment and this is easier to do off the camera stand, so I apologize ahead of time if it's jerky. 
Uh, this is your FM detector. If you don't have a generator, don't do this. I'm using a Soundtech 1000A that's been upkept and properly calibrated. Uh, we're at about 98.5, so I'm not going to mess with the oscillator. But you have to make sure that the AFC is off, otherwise you'll have lots of issues. So what I do is I make sure that the multiplex pilot's off. It's in mono. And what we do is decrease the signal. And we see that it's pretty symmetrical. You get a little bit of distortion there uh, when the signal gets low. So what you do is you tune it until that distortion clears up. And you have symmetrical clipping between tuning one way and tuning another way. So that's pretty clean. Decrease the signal further. You get a lot of noise there pretty good and then once you've found the sweet spot you adjust the detector for the maximum amplitude and distortion and you can see in one direction it distorts another direction it distorts and it's pretty sweet on one side uh, you can also do a symmetrical clipping thing with a high signal and we'll attenuate that a little bit so you can see it easier but in one direction you'll see distortion or clipping in another direction you'll see distortion and clipping you just want that that sweet spot to be equal on both sides I guess is the best way to put it this thing has pretty good sensitivity actually we're we're getting down to about maybe eight microvolts which is about what you'd expect for this it's pretty good okay so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it over to AM or FM AFC which is one click clockwise and what you want to do is see that there's no change between no AFC and AFC if you see a change the detector is not aligned right and so if I go to AFC and then tune off station a little bit we can see that it's correcting itself it gets down all words a little bit and then when we turn the AFC off you'll see that it's really crummy and it brings it back in so with all these you tune them with the AFC off first and then use the AFC to lock it in alright now onward to the multiplex section now there's one of two ways you can do this I prefer to do it with a scope but if you don't have a scope uh, that's a whole nother issue so we're in FM stereo now if it's not working you have to troubleshoot the circuit but this one thankfully is working so that will make it a little bit easy uh, alright so what I'm gonna do here is, is feed a signal in we're gonna turn our pilot level up to 100 percent we're gonna put our signal at maximum now a brief test is I'm going to cycle between left and right channels so there's the right channel you can see the left is still kinda of there left channel you know your goal is to make that separation as absolute as possible uh, and there's ways that you do that but first before you do anything else I'm gonna take my free scope probe here and we're gonna take a look down into the multiplex and the way that this works is the signal comes in on the big fat coaxial cable from the detector and then you've got a trap this is your 19 kilohertz and then that then goes to the first amplifier transistor uh, and then it goes to a doubler circuit which is here is your 67 kilohertz reject your sideband reject uh, I forget if this is the 38 kilohertz or this is the 38 kilohertz but anyway what you're doing these are not as important as having a strong pilot signal so what you want to do is we want to come to the amplifier and I'm just going to come down to the, ba the uh, base here this is going to be tricky to do I'm trying to see where I can get that safely without shorting anything out let me get my hook instead hook I can at least hook onto the lead yeah 
going to make everyone dizzy with this one, sorry. All right. So here's what we're looking at now. This is our 19 kilohertz pilot signal right here. And we know that because when I turn it down on the generator, we see it goes away. We turn it up, we see it comes back in here. So if you want to speed this up a little bit so you can see it, and we'll just look at that signal there. We can see that we've got a little bit of distortion and we can adjust that peaking coil for the uh, best look. Not really changing a whole lot there. There we go. Just peek that out. I'm not sure why it's a little bit clipped, but it is. Probably not too terribly important. All right, so now that we've done that, we're going to come over to our second stage here and I think it's the collector you clip on yeah it's the collector you clip on so there it is all cleaned up and amplified and you can validate that by going through the uh, coil again peek it out I'm adjusting the second coil there not the trap the second one so that's all peaked out. So now we have a nice strong pilot signal. And there's a test point down here, which is right here. And what you see here is you should have 38 kilohertz there. And we can see it's very fast. We can speed it up there. There we go. 38 kilohertz there that's nice and clean looking and you can adjust this coil here to peak that out and we can see that there's a peak there now this is just the basic setup so we're going to fine tune this in a minute with the generator and I'll show you how so now that you've established both that the 19 and the 38 kilohertz levels are peaked out we're going to hook our load back up. All right. So there's our stereo signal going. I bumped the antenna, so it's going to be a little bit cruddy. Okay. And then if we go back to right and left, we see that we have less separation. And this is where the fine tuning comes in. And you want to fine tune that 38 kilohertz coil. This guy, you don't need to turn it very much. And we're going to tune it until we get maximum separation there on the scope. And we can go back and tune our 19 kilohertz filter and our secondary there again there's going to be a point where there's the best separation now once you've got those two dialed in there's the separation adjustments back here and oh before we tweak this throw it into mono and you want to adjust those two pots for uh, the same output because one's a right channel and one's a left channel and we can see here that these are we can match them up this one's different than a lot of them uh, they don't have these balance controls at the output of all of them this is a nice one to have so anyway now that these are fully balanced we'll reinstate our stereo and then we'll dial in our 19 and 38 again you're never going to get it perfect you're going to get it pretty close that's pretty close I think that's about as good as we're going to be able to achieve let's see if we can clear up our signal a little bit it likes a stronger signal for sure so with a really strong signal there, you can see that that separation is almost absolute. 
in that if we dial it we can see that there's a sweet spot if you want to crank up the sensitivity of the channel that's supposed to be separated and make that line as flat as possible you can do that too you gotta have the generator for this one if you don't you're wasting your time and so now we can go between right channel and left channel ooh look at that maybe that's my oscillator though interesting why did that change Maybe that level control is touchy. Yeah, it is touchy. Let's see here. Let's turn this down a little bit. Of course, that could also be the uh, volume control being nonlinear, too. Interesting. That's probably a volume control thing because now that it's now it's settled back down in. So right, left, we're happy. Okay. Now if you wanted to do an IF alignment on this, you can. Uh, but again, you really need the proper equipment. Basically, the way that I do it is with the generator in mono. And there's a couple of key points. Uh, don't get your your stuff confused. Uh, really, the way that I do it is I go to the uh, I put a 90 megahertz signal in, adjust, peak the RF in the mixer for 90, and then go to 106 and peak those. Uh, and then you can kind of look at the uh, output pre detector They're on this transistor here this uh, Q108 uh, I think that's what it is yeah it's 108 uh, on the collector there and you can just peek the IF transformers at the collector of that transistor let me just show you what it looks like here and if we go down here and turn this on the collector lead on this is always fun to get to so if we come down to the collector lead on the final IF transistor, assuming it will let me do that, and we're just going to select that channel so it's easier to see. Let me turn this off. And so we have a nice fat IF signal which goes up and down with the generator. This one's in pretty good alignment already, but uh, I'm not going to mess with the uh, tuning gang thing, but here's the IF transformer, which is this thing right here. We're going to peek that out. It's already peaked. It's pretty good. And then we're going to do the FM IF here. Again, that was already peaked. This really didn't even need an alignment. Oh, that one needed to be peaked. Okay, so that's better. But that's the quick way, quick and dirty way to do it with a generator. If you don't have the SAMs or all of the test equipment, it's pretty easy peasy. Uh, turn up the sensitivity so they match again. And then turn on stereo. And you see how the alignment affected the stereo. So you have to go back and realign the uh, 19 kilohertz because it out affects the output of the detector. There we go. So that's all dialed up again. So make sure to do your align your IF alignment before your multiplex. But that's more or less the uh, the basic service on these. Uh, if you want to do the AM stuff, uh, these are one of these is your intended trimmer and the other is your oscillator. I forget which. Sam's is really helpful here. And then uh, your AM, IFs are here, IF and detector. Rarely ever do I see these AM radios with a problem. Okay, so that pretty much takes care of the basics there. Let's turn it back over to auxiliary. Now if you all are curious, um, let's dial that back up there again. 
make sure that switch isn't dirty. It is dirty. Look at that. That uh, selector switch there is dirty. There we go. That cleaned up. So, they had a lot of talk about power output on these things, and they're not very powerful. Institute of High Fidelity and Instantaneous Peak Power and all that stuff is just kind of blah. So, you're going to see what these things really put out, which isn't all that much. You can see here that we get the clippy clippy going on here. Yeah, let's adjust our balance once again. Keep forgetting to do this with the volume at maximum. Uh, but you can see it rounds off there. Yep, nice and close. Yucky clipping. Alright, so you back it off until you just get rid of that clipping. You can see that it's not the cleanest sine wave. This Again, this is a mid-fi thing. This ain't a hi-fi thing. Yeah, let's grab our meter. Alright, so I'm just holding the terminals there. We got 8.23 volts RMS AC. So squaring that, let's round down, make it easy, 64, wa uh, 64 volts squared divided by resistive load, 8 ohms, so that's 8 watts a channel. 8 watts. Now, you may not think that's a big deal, but when you've got big 15-inch workers and the overall sensitivity of them is about 100 dB, it goes a long way. Um, so, yeah, this one's only 8 watts a channel, but it's doing all right. There's bigger ones. There was, a, I believe, a 15 watt per channel, a 25 watt per channel. They had even a 50 watt per channel, but they were not these self-contained units. They were separates. As far as the lamps, number 1847 for the lamps. I haven't replaced these yet. Uh, the little meter lamp back here is a number 49, which is, I believe, 2 volt, 2.5 volt, 2 volt, 2.5 volt, 50 milliamper. Uh, you could do an LED with this, although just, you know, get the lamp, jeez. Uh, yeah. So that pretty much covers the basic service aspects of these self-contained Magnavoxes. Uh, that just gives you a rundown on what to do after the recap. If you've got more serious issues, obviously you need troubleshooting to figure out what's going on there. Uh, so I hope this was useful to you guys with these Magnavox Astrosonics. Uh, you kind of do have to recap these before going crazy on them. Uh, but don't recap until you know that the basic aspects of the machine are functioning. And, uh, yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching the video, guys. More stuff to come soon.